What is up, YouTube? Uh, I am currently about to change my CO2 tank. Reminded me I want to do a video on this, do an update. So if you guys ever wanted to know how to move a CO2 tank, how to use a CO2 tank, a couple safety things, how to set up your regulator, what is a regulator, your monitor, your controller, how to set it up, how to hook it up, what are they, what do they do, all that good stuff. This is pretty much going to be the video for you, right? So I wanted to get into that and kind of show you from start to finish, you know, how do you do it, right? So when you come out, this is a 50 pound tank. So it's 50 pounds of gas inside of this tank because I believe it's how that works. So it's much heavier than 50 pounds. If you have a 20 pound tank, they're about this big. So these are pretty heavy to say the least and they're just steel. Now CO2 is not an explosive gas or flammable, but uh, this is under pressure. So whenever you're moving it, make sure this metal caps on because otherwise you have your little valve and if this tips over and snaps the valve off, it's going to shoot across the room, right? It's not as... Not as bad as like an oxygen tank, but it's still got a lot of pressure and you basically got a little steel missile shooting around. So not a good time, right? Don't do that. So make sure you have your cap on. When you get these, you're probably gonna exchange them at like a hydroponic shop or a gas store. I go to like a welding shop, Allied Gas, because they're much cheaper there. It used to be $28, now it's like $34 for a 50 pound, which lasts me months. So it's better than a hydroponic shop though. When you get them, I'll show you in a little bit, but there's actually uh, like a heat shrink wrap over the valve. So you know that nobody's tampered with it since it's been filled. You wanna make sure where you're getting it from has that over there and I'll show you guys in a second. But the first thing I wanted to show you while I still got this cap on is how to move a tank. Cause this is, these are heavy, right? So you, you're not gonna be picking this up and carrying it. If you have a little dolly and it chains on and pushes it, that's gonna make life a lot easier. But I'm assuming most of you don't have that because you don't work in welding or in a shop where you have access to this. And if you do, you don't need this video anyhow because you already know all about this stuff, right? So when you move it, you're gonna, call, you're gonna do what's walking a tank. You tilt the tank a little bit and you spin it. And that's how you get this big old tank wherever you need it to get to go. So I'm gonna actually hook this up in the corner and then I'm gonna go over the process of setting up your regulator and the details about it and all that here in just a second. Um, I just have to clear some stuff out of the way to get in the corner and I'll see you guys in just a moment. All right, and we're back. So I got the tank in the corner and I have it strapped up. Uh, highly recommend doing this because you do not want this to fall over. Once again, it is under pressure even though it's not explosive. So it still can be dangerous, right? So I wanted to go over first all the equipment you're gonna need and then I'll actually go through the process itself. So first things first, your tank. Tank strapped in the corner. When you take the cap off, I already unscrewed it a little bit to make it easy because it is very loud when you take it off, it's squeaking. Here's your uh, valve I was talking about and here's the heat shrink wrap. That peels off, let me get that tube out of the way, sorry. This peels off, it has a perforated edge, you just pop it with your fingers, yank it off, pretty easy to do. Uh, so you have your tank itself, that, that uh, heat shrink wrap is to do two things. Once it's tamper proof, right? You know that nobody's been stealing your gas and you know that it helps keep this clean. Even though it does help keep this clean, I would highly recommend doing a quick pop like that, a little loud, and that makes sure any dust or anything that's inside of this has blown on out and you know that it is clean. So the equipment that you're gonna need before you get started, first things first, you need your regulator. This is a regulator, this is Titan regulator. You can get Vivisun or Manatee, uh, whatever it is. I have one in the link in the description below as well, but there's a bunch of them. They range anywhere from like 30 bucks and up, right? But your regulator, it does exactly what it says it's gonna do, it regulates. It regulates high pressure from inside of the tank to low pressure running through this little clear tube right here. And mine is hooked to the back of a fan, so as my fan spins, it evenly distributes around the room. Your regulator is gonna come with these little seals right here. I just have this one balancing on here and it's gonna have an extra one zip tied to it usually. And that is to seal it up next to that. So uh, aside from your regulator, you know, it's gonna come with a, you need one that has a solenoid plug, uh, you know, powered solenoid. So that way it can plug into your uh, power supply or in this case plugged into the back of my monitor slash controller, which is this black wire, which We'll go over here, follow this around. This takes us to, let me turn that off so you guys can actually hear me. This takes us to our CO2 monitor and controller. So it is your monitor because this right here goes up to my CO2 sensor and it also has a little light LED sensor on there. So that way when your lights are on, it knows when to turn on. So, uh, and that's your, that's your monitor, right? It monitors what your CO2 levels are. 
and then it's your controller because this, as we just covered, plugs into there. So your regulator plugs into the back and it gives power and then a solenoid allows it to turn on, right? So your monitor controller, you can set it up however you want, obviously. This is telling you what I have right now. It's currently 2,000 ppms, and that's because when I cracked that, it just dosed it and got really strong in here really fast, right? So you can set what you want. Your center is what you're aiming for. I have it set currently for 1,600 in here. My zone is how much it fluctuates by. So if I have it set to 1,600, it'll wait until this drops to 1,500. Then it'll click on and it'll it'll keep it'll stay on until this raises all the way up to 1700 because my zone is 100. So you can set your zone 200, 300, you know whatever you want your little zone to do. I like a real tight zone so I can keep it really tightly controlled in here. Obviously, it is currently off. My output light is not on because we are over the 1700 zone, so it's not going to be on, right? You can tell that it's daytime because it's monitoring uh, LEDs, and this is how you change it, right? You go to menu, you can hit enter for your center change it up or down and increments at 50. Hit enter to choose it. If you want to change your zone, you go center, zone, enter into zone, change it around, right? Enter, menu, zone, you have your recal, you have your advanced. You can go into there and that allows you to see, you can check little person or the tree. I chose the tree because that means it's greenhouse setting which means that it's only gonna turn on when it registers light, which is when your plants use CO2. So that's how you set that up. And those are the different functions. This specific one was about 150, 160. It's also in the link in the descriptions. Uh, if you have a different one, it might not be exactly identical to this. There's gonna be different ways to do it. Uh, the advanced setting also has you go to altitude, as you can see here. So make sure whatever you have your set at, it's at the right altitude because that does matter. So, and follow the instructions on that, you know, cause you might have one that's a little bit different and I don't want to go too deep in all of that. So, but that's, that, in a nutshell, that's the settings. Uh, make sure you go over your individual instructions to do that, right? And for your, so your sensor, my sensor, if you notice, is way up here. So, I sometimes will have it run across the roof so it can dangle at the top of the canopy. So you, preferably, that's where you want it. So that way you're getting CO2 levels at the top of the canopy. I have it sitting over here because I didn't want to run it but it's up higher than my canopy because you, CO2 sinks, right? So even though I have lots of fans circulating air, CO2 still sinks. If I were to take that and put it way down here, I'm gonna get a higher reading. So you want it to be above your plants or at the very top of where your canopy is, so that way you know that all of your plant is getting that, you know what I mean? So that way you know you're getting an accurate reading. One other thing you're gonna need, or two other things you're gonna need, more of tools, you need to get yourself a wrench because you may not be able to tighten this with your fingers tight enough to prevent a leak and you need soapy water, just dish soap and water to check for leaks. You can use a little squirt bottle, it's a little bit easier, but I got this just in case. Uh, so let me go ahead and set this little tripod up, see if I can do it. So we can get a little video of me actually plugging this thing in. So hopefully you guys can see that. I'll try to keep my arms out of the way while I do this, so bear with me. So we already cracked it. There's our little seal. See, it comes off. It's just sitting on there like that. Come up. Put it on. Tighten it. Pretty easy. I would always recommend leaning it back a little tiny bit. Not a lot, because when you tighten near the end, it's going to want to rotate forward. So you don't want it facing down. So just a slight tilt up. So when it, if it does rotate forward, you're all good to go. And obviously, you want your tank set where you can actually access this. Let me spin it so you guys can see. Give it a little tense. If you're gonna use something to tighten it, you don't need much. These threads aren't very thick, they're not big, so you can easily strip them like that. Little tug, nothing major, right? Now, you don't want, this is your uh, your flow rate. It's like per cubic feet or, you know, uh, square feet per cubic hour or something like that. I can't remember the exact meaning of it, but this tells you how fast you need, you know, how fast your flow rate is. Anywhere from like one to five is probably good. It goes all the way up to like 10, 15. But if you're way up here, you run the risk of, because it comes out very, very cold, you'll freeze this and then it may not open or close properly if it's frozen. So if you start seeing frost building up, your flow's too high. Just, you know, hit four or five, something like that. Your monitor is gonna do it control, you know, when it goes on and off, that's just how fast it's coming out. So it's not that big of a deal really. But you wanna make sure that it's not closed completely shut all the way tight. Open it a little bit. Because when you open this, all this pressure is going to slam in here. And if it's open a little bit, it might let it flow through. So it keeps it from damaging anything in here, right? So we're going to go ahead and start with a small crack. You're going to see your pressure. Let me see if I can show you. 
you're gonna see your pressure go up. We're at about 1,000 PSI, so if you can see the little red 1,000, and yours should be around 1,000. If it's not, and it's like it's 500, you might wanna take it back and ask the shop what's going on. We'll go ahead and just give this a few cranks, get it nice and open. I'm gonna go ahead with my other hand, grab this soapy water, and we're gonna check all of the, the joining spaces. You may be able to hear a hiss or something, depending on how loud your room is. Put soap on all the joining spaces. Don't get it inside the electronics, obviously. I mean, that goes without saying, but check it. You know, put it around anywhere that it joins, good to go. If you hear a hiss or anything like that, obviously there's that. If you need to tighten it, you know, if you hear a hiss, it might be leaking a little bit, tighten a little bit, but we seem to be good right now. It's all the way open. And obviously it's off because I'm above my mark, like I said, on the monitor, because it's over 2000. Otherwise this would be on. So we know the pressure is stuck in here. It's not turning on. We're not seeing any bubbles. We're good to go, right? Easy peasy. So now that that's done, you're uh, pretty much set at this point. You can, you know, make sure you run your hose somewhere either behind a fan to evenly distribute, or if you have a big room, you can get those like porous hoses and you'll just zigzag it across your room. So that way it just falls. Cause like I said, it is heavier than air. Uh, <clears throat> and it will fall down, you know, from the top to the bottom of your canopy. You never want to have it low. Try to have it high or behind like an air source to be able to push it around. So now that we have this hooked up, it will turn on once we drop below our set mark, you know, per the zone of our center of 1600. So once we get down to 1500 roughly, you'll hear it click on, this will start hissing away. You'll see your ball jump up. Uh, when you first, obviously when we first cracked it, we saw it jump because we know there's a lot of pressure slamming in there. But in a nutshell, that's pretty much how you hook up your CO2. Those are all the parts, that's what the parts do. I do clean my tanks off when I first bring them into the room because uh, they are really dirty, especially because I get them from welding shops. Uh, and obviously they've been on construction yards and things like that. So, and I wanna make sure that I'm not tracking anything in. But it's a pretty simple process. As long as you take your time, you're gonna do this just fine. You don't have to, you know, it ain't gonna be dangerous if you're smart about it. You know, make sure your cap's on when you're transporting it. Make sure it's strapped up when it's in the corner so, you know, there's no risk of it falling down. And other than that, it's pretty simple. Test for leaks. If there is a leak and you don't hear it, you don't see it in the bubbles, one way of also knowing is if you leave the room and somehow this just keeps climbing up, even though this is off, you know there's a leak. You know, retest the fittings, maybe take it off, put it back on, find out what's going on, right? Because you know it's gonna be somewhere around here. But that's it. Hope you guys found that informative. Uh, I try to make it a little bit more detailed than the previous video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them. If you like this kind of stuff, you know, hit a like, hit a subscribe, show a little bit of support. Uh, other than that, I think that's about it. So peace out, YouTube. As always, guys, happy growing, man.